Thank you very much for the invitation to participate. Um, we're going to switch gears from that nice presentation of data. Um, then we're going to talk about technique. Uh, Professor Wakabayashi showed more or less um, a beautiful technique of how to do the dissection and the extra glissonian technique, the, the, the capsule, the neck capsule that he, call, that he calls. I'm going to show you something different. Um, uh, this is first just a, a quick two, three slides at our Center Mayo Clinic Florida on up to 2014. Now we're updating the data on the last four years. But this is just to show that how we can learn. Um, uh, we had done uh, 387 uh, liver resections. At that time, only 55% were major resections. And you have the data there. And our results were very good. We had zero mortality. Morbidity was very acceptable. But if you concentrate on this, this was 600 cc's of blood loss. That was probably not the best. And um, how we have addressed that is by trying to uh, standardize the way how we do the parenchymal transection. And uh, people that are doing that at my institution are from both uh, backgrounds. I mean, one from many invasive with, with HPV training, another one with HPV training and surgical oncology, and two of uh, transplants. Then trying to standardize wasn't that easy. Um, but the standardization has given us now preliminary results where we were able to decrease this. The reason why I present that is because sometimes we present only the good results. 600 cc's is not terribly bad, but today in laparoscopic surgery should be better than that. Then if you follow your own outcomes, you can try to see what areas you can improve, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, the, the clavian complications were the same. Um, in terms of right hepatectomy, um, uh, Professor Wakabayashi has shown a very nicely the, the difficulty score, and the difficulty score for right hepatectomy is basically, um, it's basically in, uh, goes to, I'm sorry, goes to high, low high, I don't know what happened, goes to low high um, uh, complexity. If it is just a simple right hepatectomy, usually seven or eight, depending on the patient's BMI and other conditions. Um, I use a modified lateral position. Depending the patient's body habitus, it will be more left lateral or less left lateral, and also depending the locations of the, uh, of the lesions. But for practical purposes for this presentation, we're going to assume this is a lateral position. I'm going to try to tell you what are the advantages I found. We start on uh, inflow control. Uh, we try to identify the different structures, in this case, the right hepatic artery, the portal vein, and the bile duct, and uh, do the division extra um, hepatic if possible. Uh, contrary to um, the Glissonian technique, we do isolate the, the, the elements separately. Um, if it's feasible, we try to do an outfall control. In this case, in the left, on the left lateral decutus position uh, with a heavy liver, you can even uh, see how the liver, after you free it from the cava, brings everything towards the middle and, and uh, left, and can, you can have access. But we do that only if it is straightforward and easy. If not, we do an intraparenchymal retraction of the vein, and then the extraction of the port. Um, then let me just show you... Um, little videos, and I'm going to concentrate mainly on the, the advantage of the lateral the position. Can we mute the, the video? The Thank you. If you move the, the scope to the lateral the port, the then uh, you can see all of this area very nicely. You, the, the port, the, the scope is on the left side, on the right side of the patient, and with the patient in, rever in a lateral position, everything goes midway, and you can clearly see the portal vein on this area and be able to go up to the bifurcation and do a dissection and a direct visualization. If you decide to do this technique without doing a glisson capsule, you can still use the capsule to try to help do the dissection. You can pull the capsule down a little bit, and when you pull the capsule down, like we're doing now, you just grasp it. And you can go between the capsule using the capsule as a stop to be able to go under. And you can see the direct visualization. And I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. We use the finger dissection. And you can go around and the direct visualization here. And again, remember, we're above the bifurcation. And we can clearly see this. In similar manner as it has shown before, uh, when you're going to use a stapler, you, uh, we use kind of a mini hanging maneuvers on the vessels. This is not a hanging maneuver, but it's just a retraction. 
and that allows us to put the stapler. The difficulty is that we use staplers that are really intestinal staplers. These are not liver or vascular staplers. Then like in this case, you can have a stop. If feasible, we go anterior, posterior, and then we can use the whole stapler. But I show this video because even if you haven't done a complete division, you can, you can staple it and then divide it under their visualization, again, because of the angle. This is the left hepatic vein, and we're really in the hilum, and you can see all of this well. Then you end dividing, you can put a clip if you want to be more secure, and then finish the division. You put the clip on the other side and finish the division, you have your inflow control. Uh, the right hepatic artery, I'm basically going to skip it because of, um, it's pretty straightforward. You just go in and, uh, and ligate the artery externally if uh, you can uh, locate it, and this was shown already by Professor Wakabayashi. Um, in terms of the hepatic duct, the majority of the time is intraparenchymal. Then uh, um, at this time, we have a delineation, demarcation, and we're going to go as um, showing, uh, uh, as Dr. Wakabayashi has shown, we do use reverse uh, indoniacin green now, and uh, this was before we did the indoniacin green, where this would light up and this other part wouldn't light up. As we all know, the first two centimeters of liver parenchyma, the first superficial, you can do with the cautery or harmonic scalpel. Uh, here we go up to the area of the... Um, gallbladder fossa, and then we can we start the, the parenchymal dissection. Uh, we like to use bipolar um, dissection with, um, with uh, ultrasonic shears. And then we use uh, this technique that I actually learned from the Japanese, um, that, that you pull this out, and you can use a rubber band or here, and that allows you to open this like a book, continue going further, and then you get the um, bile duct and staple and divide it intraparenchymally. In terms of the mobilization, uh, we tend to mobilize the liver um, a little earlier. Uh, we, in large masses, we don't mobilize it and we keep it, as uh, Professor Wakabayashi has shown, attached to the right. But if not, you can readily do this in the lateral position. Uh, you, you start separating the cava from the liver this is the um, cava or ligament or the Mancucci ligament that sometimes um, uh, has uh, some vascular supply and we prefer to go ahead and go around it. It's very important for those that are starting to do this procedure to make sure you divide and identify this. It's very variable in different patients. It's thicker or thinner, but sometimes can even mimic like if it would be um, the the, uh, some people can get it confused as it will be the right hepatic vein or they don't have access and they apply directly the stapler and that could be extremely dangerous. This is a, a solid um, uh, cava ligament and therefore we staple it and divide it. We continue. Once you divide that, then you have this a very wide opening. The weight of the liver is helping us the retraction and you can see very clearly how the hepatic vein is here and then you just proceed and apply the stapler very fast and divide it. In this case, it's um, a hand-assisted approach because of the size of the liver at the very last. Now, without hand-assisted, I would not recommend to do this unless um, you have a lot of experience, um, uh, not at the beginning, but you can isolate the vein well and then use a stapler halfway if it is not going to go completely. Uh, sometimes it can go com divided completely, but you should never force it. The important thing is that the assistant here has this stapler ready, and you can even put it like this without pulling any pressure. It's partially divided, and then the angle is much uh, uh, greater facilitated by having a, a smaller portion, and then you can finish in the division. Again, we divide the cava only um, when, uh, um, when it's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the hepatic vein only when it is uh, straightforward. If not, we don't, uh, we don't do that. We use uh, CUSA uh, only in cases that we're going to be close to the veins, like the, the left hepatic vein. If we're not going to be, if the dissection is just like a traditional right hepatectomy, um, uh, we don't use the CUSA. We do use a combination of bipolar dissection for identification. We try to minimize the use of staplers um, just for, this is uh, for major trunks. Um, the, uh, this is a very hemostatic, um, hemostatic dissection. Then 
uh, once the specimen is done, uh, you put an endoscopic retrieval bag um, and uh, remove it from the, uh, from the abdomen. Uh, for removal of the abdomen, we normally use a fan steel incision. Um, uh, occasionally, we, uh, if we're using a hand port, we take it uh, th out through the hand port. Then laparoscopic liver resection has been performed in over 9,500 uh, patients worldwide, as uh, Professor Geller stated. Actually, between my slide and his slide, there were 500 liver resections more. Then uh, they're doing it very fast. Major liver resections can be done with low morbidity, mortality by experienced surgeons and in selected patients. Um, there is a clear need for advanced laparoscopic skills, as well as a clear need for HPV training and open liver surgery experience. The results are comparable, as um, the Professor Geller has explained. And I would just say there's a variety of technical approaches, and the most important thing is to tailor your approach to each patient's, each disease process, and as well as the surgeon's experience. I always say you either tailor it to the patient or ask the patient to find another tailor. Thank you very much.